Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to realestateinvestormba.com. At Real Estate Investor MBA, we strive to provide valuable information from various experts within the business and real estate community, covering real-time market and economic information, as well as curriculum-level material within various real estate investing niches. We aim to be relevant, straightforward, and forthcoming with actionable information for our community. And here's your hosts, Tejas Gosai and Jeremy Moyer. Welcome to Lehigh Valley Private Equity Fund. Lehigh Valley Private Equity Fund is a Regulation D evergreen private fund designed to provide a 7% preferred return and an overall annualized target return of 12% through diversification in lending and acquisitions in the real estate industry. With over 100 years of combined real estate, investment, and management experience, our management team is actively sourcing opportunities and improving real estate in the Lehigh Valley and surrounding regions. The Lehigh Valley is booming. The private sector GDP is larger than 112 countries, standing at over $41.2 billion annually. Lehigh Valley Private Equity Fund uses three methods to create returns for our investors. Qualified lending, buy and holds, and rehab resell projects. Our philosophy is simple, quality over quantity. Our primary goal is to protect our investors, and our strategy is to produce consistent high yield returns. Thank you so much for visiting us. Contact us easily by visiting www.lvpefund.com or call us anytime 24-7 at 484-362-1313. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Go Sai. Hi guys, it's Tejas Go Sai and I have my co-host Jeremy Moyer over here. Um, I am pulling over in just a couple minutes to conduct this interview, but I could not miss it. I'm super excited about our guest today, and uh, we have been producing a ton of our podcast. We have a bunch of support, and our goal was really just to share information about our beautiful valley, and this one's super special because the guest we have today has been beautifying the valley herself. Um, I, I can't say single-handedly because we now know how networked and, and, and what you've had to go through here. But with that said, Jeremy, you mind introducing our guest? Absolutely. So we're excited to have Becky Bradley with us today. So Becky has uh, 20 years of experience in city, regional, economic development, historic preservation, transportation planning, and including significant implementation experience in community revitalization, infrastructure investment, roadway redesign, and trail construction. She has been the executive director of the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission since August of 2013 and is leading a $2.5 billion regional transportation planning program, as well as balancing the needs of the Lehigh Valley's rapidly growing population through this organization's county planning responsibilities. She has led the joint effort to combine the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission's general land use plan with the transportation and investment plan through the Lehigh Valley Transportation Study, which was done in 2019. The result, which is Future LV, the regional plan, is one of the first regional transportation comprehensive land use plans in the nation and sets the direction for the region for the next 25 years. So Becky, I wanna thank you so much for joining uh, today. I know you're super busy uh, with everything that's on your plate. We definitely have a bunch to get through and your resume definitely had a lot more on it than what I read and it was all really impressive. Um, can you give your li our listeners a brief explanation of you know, how you got involved in planning economic development side and then how did you also came to the Valley? Sure, um, I actually started uh, my career working for um, two different successive Lieutenant governors in the state of Illinois, specifically in their Illinois Main Street program. So that was downtown revitalization, 
Um, and, it, you know, at the time it was the 90s. So um, a lot of, uh, you know, big strip centers were being built. You know, Walmart was coming to rural America. Um, and so there were new challenges on Main Street. And I learned about planning then. I, I'd, I'd never heard of it before. And uh, I had, you know, a, an undergraduate degree at the time. And so um, I decided after working there to um, go pursue a master's degree at the University of Pennsylvania is specifically in city and regional planning. So that's how I found planning and that's how I got out here. Um, and then I met my husband um, right after I graduated Penn and he's from the Lehigh Valley. And so um, his family's been here since 1732. And when you know Columbus sailed the ocean blue, we always joke or dinosaurs roamed uh, the Lehigh Valley. <laughs> but that aside, um, uh, that's how I came up here. And I was lucky enough to start working in the city of, of Easton and got to be integral to, you know, kickstarting their revitalization and got to do some really amazing things with the people there, what which year, ultimately led me here. What year was that when you were in Easton or what time period? Um, from 2005 to 2013. So you were the person that we have to thank for what is happening in Easton now? One of several. You know, we got <laughs> Mayor Panto, of course. He's, you know, one of the, um, you know, biggest mentors in, in my life. He's a fantastic human being. He gave a bunch of us young kids, you know, young punk kids, uh, a chance. He hired a bunch of us and just said, like, look, do what you 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 need to do to turn this around. And all of us work together to make that happen. So there was a great group of people from the police department to public works, to economic development, to planning codes and development like I had that really uh, built the city back up. And now it's just like, it's amazing. It's so amazing what's what's happening wow, there. A lot of change for sure. So, uh, Becky, we, you, know, we, you and I had an opportunity to talk um, like a week or two ago for a, a good hour. And I've learned, I learned just from that conversation, I learned quite a bit. Can you explain to our listeners what the planning commission does uh, and how it works with all these different groups in the, the area here in the Lehigh County uh, or Lehigh Valley, sorry. Um, and how, what, like, where does it fit within everything? Sure. Um, so the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission was actually founded back in 1961. So we're in our 59th year of existence, uh, 60 years next year, which is it's a big deal. Um, but we were really founded for a couple of reasons. Um, initially, it was because the interstate highway system was starting to be um, envisioned and built across America. So they needed an agency regionally to figure out how and where the roads could go and then where we could grow the existing system. So, uh, and then also LVPC as a part of that then needed, it was at the time it was called the Joint Planning Commission of Lehigh and Northampton counties. Simultaneously, the state of Pennsylvania passed the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, which then required counties to have planning. So um, that's where we got our advisory role to all 62 municipalities and 17 school districts and 16 watersheds and all these other cool things we get to do. So we see every subdivision and land development plan, every municipal ordinance change. We actually do work and serve as the local planning commission for about a handful of communities that just decided that it was easier for us to do it than for them to set up their own. So um, it turned out to be like a hybrid of federal rules and roles and responsibilities around transportation tied in with county planning responsibilities. And then over time that has kind of grown into some other things like global water quality and watershed related items and, and things like that. So it's, uh, I have two boards. Um, interestingly enough, we have the LVPC, which everybody knows about. That's a county planning commission and everybody just calls us that. But then we have the Lehigh Valley Transportation Study, innocuously named worth of bill billions of dollars in um, road and bridge and, and transit planning and, and investment. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a separate board, though there are some similarities between the, the people on, on both. That's under the federal law. So we do lots of really cool stuff. But really at the end of the day, if you want to put it together outside of the complicated bits, mm -hmm. um, we really are kind of the umbrella agency that kind of does a lot of the management or 
getting everybody to work together and figuring out how to, you know, get this puzzle piece, you know, put together with this puzzle piece to just make it all work. Whether that's water and sewer and stormwater to land use and development to housing, the economy, the environment, parks, rec, and open space, transportation, you, you get the idea. Mm-hmm. That, that's, I think that's a great explanation. The, there's a lot of moving parts um, to, to what you guys do. And from I'm sure there's a lot more than I even understand. Um, I can only imagine the amount of data that you guys have to look at and crunch through and the studies that you you do can you and you you did talk to me briefly about this when we had a a one-off call can you and it was pretty impressive what you do and what you go through before you even publish the data like if the data is not sound you don't publish it can you just kind of give an idea and explain that to the listeners like the the type of uh what you look at yeah um we're the official Census Bureau uh, affiliate for the, the region, um, and we're a neutral governmental entity. So we are not selling you anything. We're not marketing anything. Our job is to report what's actually going on. Um, and one of the responsibilities of being a data scientist is that you have to be neutral on these things and let the numbers tell you um, what you know, what the conclusion is, not come into anything with a, a predefined uh, answer that you want to get out of there. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there are times that I'm like, oh, I would have never thought it was that, but you find out it is, and you have to accept that. And that is really critical to who we are. We have to be reliable. We have to be accurate. Um, the integrity of the commission is absolutely everything. Um, and so one of our major responsibilities is providing accurate and timely information to folks um, and working with our partners at the, the federal and state levels, whether it's the Bureau of Labor Statistics or the Census Bureau or the U.S. Department of Transportation, whomever, um, the Penn State Data Center, working with all of these folks to try to make sure that we have accurate information to give out to the people in the Lehigh Valley. And the people is anyone private sector, individual people, nonprofits, other governments. Um, And so we do a lot, including population projections that are and employment projections by sector Mm -hmm. um, that are then given out to the federal agencies. And they use those to kind of cross dock some of the the more uh, aggregated information and work that they do. So we have to be accurate. And if we cannot be accurate, it will never come out of, of this this office. And that's critical. I mean, the the community needs that information. They need it to be good or what's 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 the point? Mm-hmm. Developers make decisions based on where on we're data. telling them things yeah. are growing. Yeah, so. I, 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 I got to jump in. So um, first of all, <laughs> you mentioned Penn State. I went there for law school. We are, I have to say it. Um, so I you're you're right in my world. So in my early twenties and thirties, um, I built almost a hundred million dollars worth of hotels and gas stations, convenience stores in the Pittsburgh, um, Ohio, West Virginia market during the oil and gas boom, mm-hmm. and it was all data. Like there was yep. nothing about. It. And then what was really interesting from a teeny tiny person, me doing this is. It was more about being able to prove the data, like the, 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 and then build on that, you know, in the following quarter or the following year and things like that. So, you know, somebody, me now, who married somebody from the Valley, had to move here in 2017, got my real estate license, rebuilt my life, and fell in love with this place. Um, I keep saying it in every interview, like I owe it to you guys, you know, us realtors, the 2,742 of us as of this morning, owe it. Oh. to you guys and and i mean we're growing by leaps and bounds through covid sure. which is crazy you couldn't even take exams during that point so yeah. you know your data um you've been along here now where you've you've used data you've you've pushed it out there developers have relied on it it was proven the numbers worked the bank financing worked the debt to income mm-hmm. ratios worked and you know their personal guarantees didn't get called in through covid because things were okay. And that's really why we started this show. Like people don't really understand what you do or what other people do. And it's really a village. And now is the time, this is this is post COVID now, is the time that it, it's meant to be for the Valley. So 
sorry I talk so much, but that's just, yeah, a, know. you know, that's a big thank you. And also to explain to our listeners, you know, from my perspective, this is, this is so much to unpack. We're already at 12 minutes. We're not going to be able to do it. So <laughs> let, let, let's hit some high points. Like you have helped beautify the community. You've helped turn it into what it is. And it's not really about this year or next year. It's about 2022 and 2023 and things like that. I guess the question is, um, my, my question is like, how do you, how, how, how are you guys looking at the future future? Because we're in a very pivotal moment this mm -hmm. month and this quarter and next month and next quarter and all of that stuff. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause one of the reasons why, um, you know, we work so hard to get the Lehigh Valley Transportation Study and their transportation planning and investment program to align with the county's planning program and what they wanted to see for the environment and land use and parks and recreation and our municipal governments needed to just continue to function. Because if they don't function, business doesn't function. Business doesn't function, they don't function. Those things are inextricably linked. And we need to talk about society that way because that's actually the way it works. Yeah. Um, so at, at the end of the day, they're not separate um, sorts of things. They are separate, but they work together every single day. If one isn't successful, the other isn't successful. So um, one of the things that we did in Future LV and why we called it Future LV is we knew the world was already changing. We were already in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution. We we're already writing and talking about the growth in automation, uh, the growth in uh, 3D printing, what the um, really the retail apocalypse, which now has just been accelerated because of COVID, was going to mean to land use and development. And so we were already writing about those things. Um, and so I think we have a really good strategy about thinking forward to the future. But once COVID hit, um, it got really interesting. Um, I made the decision to not close our office. We're a government agency. And we knew developers still needed to drop off plans. They still needed to be reviewed. Uh, financing still needed to move forward. Uh, municipal government still needed to hear what we had to say about how these plans fit into their plans and what their goals for their community were, find the commonalities, find some things we could work on together or not work on together in, in, in some cases as well. Um, uh, communities needed to change their ordinances, other things. So we stayed open, um, minimal staffing, and we're still, still that way. So we do some in office and then some remote work. But the reason for that is, is because development was also high. It is still high. We have the same level of growth and development during the pandemic as we had in 2019 and in 2018. So that just tells you that, that growth and development was already accelerating before the pandemic hit and the train had already left the station. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's a positive thing, whether real estate transactions could happen for housing or not. They were about to happen and people yes. were already planning to make those investments. Interestingly enough, between January and the end of July, we had over two thousand five hundred new housing units proposed in the Lehigh Valley alone. Wow. We didn't see those numbers in twenty nineteen at all. And wow. so. Um, it's part of the reason why we developed this uh, how, uh, workshop on, on housing that anyone can join. You're welcome to be a part of it, where we're actually bringing everybody together to say, OK, we have to figure out where we don't have housing by income because um, and by job type. So if you're a teacher, where can you live in the Lehigh Valley? Is there enough housing for you if you're insert profession here, right? Insert right. income there. We need to figure that out. So the housing workshop, which actually started uh, last December, is working on that problem. And we were all set to like put out a report in September on it. And then we were like, huh, pandemic's going to change all of this. Our unemployment rate is, you know, at 14%. Yeah. Um, we don't know what's going to happen when they lift the eviction and foreclosure ban, which happened on Monday, essentially. So um, we need to work on those things right now um, and then take what we've learned from this pandemic, put it together with all these development proposals, locations, and then put out, we're hoping December, January timeframe, uh, 
more accurate version of what we're going to need in terms of housing and where. Um, and so, um, you know, that's a really positive thing. In the meantime, the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia heard what we were up to. Um, and so they literally called us two weeks ago and said, hey, we're working on this project where we're taking finding out what professions are actually vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and then we're trying to tie that to housing because we know that's going to affect banking, interest rates, wow. these other things that we work on. And we said, oh, well, we are already figuring out um, what areas of the Lehigh Valley people are paying more than 30 percent of their income or are considered cost burdened um, for rental and home ownership. We'd already been monitoring um, changes by type of, of, of housing um, costs and, and that sort of thing. We do that anyway and issue reports out every other year on that. And they said, oh, well, let's work together. So in the span of two weeks, now we have this huge partnership um, between the three city mayors, the two county executives, uh, us and the Federal Reserve. And we're actually having a meeting on it next week um, that anyone can attend. By the way, you can check it out on our website. It's called Workshop Housing, where we're actually then going to figure out what that next level, even beyond what we we're going to do before uh, we can we can achieve going forward in the future. And they're also going to provide us a benchmark. So where does the Lehigh Valley fit within the Northeast market? Right. How do we compare? Um, we can do that very easily for industrial because the truth of the matter is, is there's less of it compared to the total number of houses. So it's harder with housing. Um, and there, there aren't like entities like CBRE that monitors the industrial market, you know, and, and does leasing and, and other things for their business in the same way on the housing. So, we had to develop different infrastructure for that. And I know that was like way too long of an answer. You asked no, me about the future. That was it's, awesome. all, that, it's all like this. That was awesome. And I know when Jeremy has to ask a question, go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> My question was going to be, what, what are the big things that are happening right now? But uh, I think we, we kind of tackled some of that. Is there anything else, Becky, that, um, that you think is relevant towards uh, real estate and initiatives that, uh, or projects that you're currently um, reviewing and tackling uh, that would be relevant to our listener base? Yeah. Um, one interesting new form, I mean, the industrial market has been hopping here forever. And again, every time I bring that up, people like want to shoot the messenger. But our job <laughs> is to tell people what is actually happening in a neutral way. And I'm sorry, you don't want to hear it, some people. But if you stick your head in the sand, you, you can't invest in the infrastructure around it. You, you're still going to have congestion problems and you're still going to have mobility issues and other things. And we have to address those. It's irresponsible not to. So we've been monitoring big changes. In this case, it's the industrial market and, and then our population growth, though that has slowed, but we're still growing. And the, the other thing I want to say on population, and then I'll go back to industrial piece and, and how that's really important now. Mm -hmm. But we have been growing every year for over 60 years. So change is something that the Lehigh Valley has been doing as a full-time job in terms of population growth for more than my lifetime. Right. Um, and so it's not something that we're unable to handle. In fact, the reason why the Valley is successful is because we constantly have new people coming in to, you know, help supplement the people that have been here, like my husband's family for, you know, hundreds of years, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, it all matters. So, and everyone has a place um, and it's still beautiful here, but like balancing all those things is the tough part. So we have some exciting initiatives going on um, within the LVPC, the Lehigh Valley Transportation Study with some of our partners. I think one of the most exciting is our transportation planning. Just in June, um, the Lehigh Valley Transportation Study adopted like almost a $452 million plan for the next four years mm -hmm. to invest in road, bridge, bike, pedestrian, and transit infrastructure. And it's uh, basically a short-term cash flow model for that future LV long-range plan. Um, and 
we kind of, as an LVTS, made some decisions that we didn't necessarily make before. Um, and one of them is to invest more heavily in what uh, Lanta, a, a program Lanta has going called bus rapid transit. Mm -hmm. And that essentially enhanced bus, bus rapid transit. It basically, in its full build out, is almost like a train bus, but it would be through the Lehigh Valley. So roughly from uh, the Walmart and Whitehall down to the Allentown Transportation Center to the Bethlehem Transportation Center and then over to Easton. Sure. Um, and that would then create this opportunity for us to densify where we have existing infrastructure redevelopment opportunity, connecting places that are already successful and already have significant population in them, connecting people to businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's really exciting. We balance that out with um, a commuter trail uh, network as well. That's really important. Um, our I, outdoor recreation economy is enormous and we have not capitalized on that in the way that we could. And so we had to start laying the foundation for that infrastructure. We're doing that through Future LV, but also then through a targeted partnership called The Link, um, which brings together the trail community with the transportation community, us, funding partners like Pennsylvania Department of, of uh, Conservation and Natural Resources to figure out then where we can target that off-road infrastructure to tie to the on-road infrastructure and make it easier for people to move around and to leverage the assets that we have. Mm -hmm. One of our big projects is closing the Delaware and Lehigh National Heritage Corridor Trail Gap, which is also part of the 9-11 Memorial Trail. It's a statewide priority, but we essentially had the vision between Whitehall and Allentown of creating our own version of the San Antonio Riverwalk. We will achieve that. Yeah. And we actually have a huge private sector investment over $20 million in that project to then match up with public sector investment at the state, federal, and regional level and local level too. So we're figuring out how to put it all together. To me, that's exciting stuff because you have the vision, you have the ideas, but then how do you implement it? Yes. And so we're focusing very much on what we can do to achieve the outcomes that the community has come together and said that it wants for itself. That is the most exciting part of my job is to be able to go from the big picture, the big vision up here and build that with the community then kind of work it down to a policy perspective. What do our local governments need? Um, what county policies, state policies can we advocate for? Can we work with communities to build to then support the vision? And then your next level is the implementation. And that's done by all kinds of people um, and entities and the like. But I really love that piece of it. Um, and and it's, it's really comes down to management and being able to follow through. And that's what we get to do at the LVPC. It's fantastic. It's what you guys have done. And Don Cunningham, everybody, the whole, you know, just just the whole entire unit is really, really clean and organized. And you see that stuff. Um, sorry, Jeremy, I just monopolized this. Um, you can you. OK, so transportation and industrial can you confirm oh, a, a transportation fact for me before I ask you about industrial? Um, I listened, actually, I'm not gonna say I listened. John Levine, my partner in the Lehigh Valley Private Equity Fund, listened to the like two hour transportation committee, um, you know, one, one of the talks or something. And it was said that pre-COVID our trucks and our transportation numbers were so high and then we went through covid yes they dipped but now post covid that they are higher than they were pre-covid do you mm -hmm. know about any is that is that possible oh yeah that yeah that's us um there's uh four embedded traffic counters um in different roads in the lehigh valley there'll be more pen dots working on putting more of those in and then we take Dana. that information we report on it yeah we report on it monthly um and i mean i was already obsessed with the retail apocalypse like a it's just my thing uh, there's things we all like really cue in on that's one of my things future yeah. forces the fourth industrial revolution and retail apocalypse Love it. um so Love you know me, I'm like, okay, we're all shopping online all the time. I haven't, I mean, truth be told, 
I have not gone in to buy to a store to buy clothing in like four years. Yeah, that's um, awesome. I haven't. And I love clothes. I'm a girl. Like I've yeah. got that girl piece of me, you know, um, and I own it. I'm okay with that. Um, but online shopping, and actually I shouldn't even say online shopping. I shop on my phone. Um, I don't yeah. even use a computer to do that most of the time. I knew that stores were going to decline. I'm also an avid daily reader of The Economist. I love that. I love The Wall Street Journal too. I want every day, like yes. I'm a junkie. So uh, for that stuff. So I started hearing all these different reports and I was like, okay, this is going to happen here too. But the Lehigh Valley's delay is it usually has a delay on those things. So what's our timeline on that? Um, and so we started, you know, I specifically, but other people on the staff, I kind of enlisted them and we started looking at what this meant and I can monitor traffic and I can tell whether there's more tractor trailer movements or not, what that means for the supply chain, how that affects things like the retail economy, how does that affect our industrial market and the growth that we've seen here um, and, and the like. And so, you know, the majority of new industrial facilities that have been built. And there's been over 33 million square feet proposed in Lehigh Valley in under six years. It's the second highest growth rate in the world. So the majority of that is e-commerce. Uh, pause. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Wait, can you repeat that? Because I Slower. need to understand the significance. Yeah. Yeah. So in under six years, we've had over 33 million new square feet of industrial building development proposed in the Lehigh Valley. So now not all of that's been approved, um, but a significant portion of it has been approved by the municipal governments who have final say in that. Um, and so the majority of those facilities are occupied by e-commerce businesses. Um, and so I knew that the transition, we were living, living the, the retail changes or what yeah people call the retail apocalypse in real time here in a way that no other place in America has has or is living it. And so I knew that we had to rise to that challenge. That's what made Future LV so important from a policy perspective, but then also a transportation investment perspective. Because our road system by and large is not built to withstand all of these tractor trailer movements. And if the federal government, who's the primary funder of transportation in America, um, doesn't continue to increase funding to places like the Lehigh Valley, you can see over time, we're sort of on a collision course for, all right, that was intentional. Um, yes. We're sort of on a collision course for our, for our infrastructure. So we have to talk about the good with the bad the jobs and the opportunities, but then also what we need to do to manage our future situation or we're being irresponsible. Um, and so that's where I think monitoring these things becomes so important. And the warehousing industry literally changes every six months. And we're watching the types of buildings, how they're built, they're building up, they're automating existing warehouses are, lease terms are changing, per square foot cost is changing. All of this is changing like every six months. I, I would say probably every quarter, but it's noticeable every, you, every six you know, months. I'm on, I'm on this like crazy weird receiving end of this where I have brokers from New York that are like, I need a warehouse. I got clients that want warehouses, blah, 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 for, for like most of last year. And, you know, COVID hit and you know, the, the calls never stopped during COVID. It's like, a, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we all know like New York is, I mean, I can say this, maybe you don't have the ability to, but New York is dead from an investment standpoint and people have been leaving there since they changed the laws for rental increases last year in July. So it's just awful what's happening there. You can't sell the multi-million dollar buildings. You can't refi them. New Jersey, everyone's flocking here in droves. From my perspective, the gas stations, just a simple thing, just maybe you don't know this, but from my perspective, there's a ton of Indian gas station owners selling their gas stations in New Jersey because they're raising the minimum wage and you have to have somebody pay the pump. They're all coming here. They're not going to Scranton or Philadelphia or Harrisburg. They only want to come here and just dollar for dollar. If they just move over here, they're just not paying 
to pay at the pump. And it's just such a like, you know, different galaxy that that I'm in. And I got to say, I knew this would be the best podcast we've had to date. You're you're confirming all the crap that I've been saying for a couple <laughs> years. And, you know, I see, it's put, not crap. That's you not, know what you're talking about. <laughs> it, but 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 I have to say it is it is different from your seat to the seat of a guy who's trying to make a commission and you know like make make you know I'm being trusted on my judgment. And so that's one of the reasons we created this podcast like we have to have you back on. It's 33 minutes. This is this is overtime now. Um but I'm like you we sh you should be on this type of stuff all the time because people don't hear it enough. And I, you know, I send out mass emails, 20,000, 30,000 people. I send emails with, with all of your information on it, like <laughs> all the time. So I know your names, I study you guys. And I don't think enough agents even know to do that. It's actually sad because it would help their business. And we all lost, we were the only state out of 50 states that lost almost 65 days of market time this year because um, you know, it was a really weird time frame for us, but you know, like the best is yet to come. And, you know, that's one of the reasons in COVID we were like, we need to get voices that are logical that, that can say it. And, 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 you know, uh, respectfully, I'm a nerd. You're a nerd. Like your nerd data is, is like, this is like, I've owned that my whole life. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just great, you know, and, and the nerds rule the world and the people who get the best data end up you know, being the most trustworthy. And that's really what I see the Lehigh Valley as, as a whole. From from a consumer standpoint, like I now live here, I bought a house here, my kids are going to school here. Um, you know, I am telling everybody, I'm like, guys, if anyone's looking to move anywhere, like this is this is like heaven. This is literally like the best place in the world. I can see bears in an hour. I can go to the alligator um place in the Poconos route 611 you know we have we have everything here we have water we have fishing you know like so I I love it um I just I just can't hide my excitement and I'm in a gas station parking lot for the interview with you <laughs> yeah and I mean honestly there are so many things we have on our website and we're we really changed a couple years ago because the technology allowed us to to start doing more online interactive tools it became affordable for agencies like us, plus it, the technology actually existed in mass. So we're doing all of these searchable things online. So, uh, and I would direct anybody to our data LV page on, at lvpc.org. We have so much on housing, on COVID, the truck stuff you're talking about. Monthly, we put up graphs on our COVID page. Um, uh, you can look at the affection rate if you want to for for COVID. Um, you know, you so, can so wait, find wait, out wait, 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 where is that on here. I just want everyone to know where it is. Okay. Um, well, we have the hero slide there. That's the one that scrolls back and forth. All of the current stuff we're working on is in there. But that COVID, that like uh, the little virus thing, uh, yeah. you can click on that. That'll get you to that truck data. But uh, the regional plan is there. The first one, I think, is uh, we just did a new uh, multimodal transportation plan. And that's just nerd code for bike, yeah. pedestrian, that's last so few awesome. feet of transit. Your, your development folks, this build monthly report, uh, every month we put it out. We tell you uh, we have an online interactive map for that, too. Where? What is being proposed? What type of housing? Is it you know commercial? What's going on? Um, and that, you know, we're the only agency that sees that stuff valley wide. And so we report on that pretty widely. That comes out about the 15th of every month. Um, and we just call it Build LV because it's really about building and, and development. Um, but there is, you know, it, the housing stuff, there's pages and data LV specifically targeted to that. We did an equity analysis of the, the Lehigh Valley as well. Um, and that includes everything from race and ethnicity, well, but it also an is educational attainment, zero vehicle households, unemployment, all of these things, because there are all these factors that tie into whether a person's successful or not. You have an online interactive map for that, too. And it looks at everything from disability to poverty rate to income. And so, I mean, the, if, if we've got it, we're trying to get it online as fast as we can so people can use it. Because we know people make decisions by this information 
And oftentimes people just need someone to put it in a place where it's easily accessible to them or do some small interpretation so they know what they're looking at and what it means. Um, so there's so much going on. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful. It doesn't it's stop. really magnificent. It, it, it's, it's really magnificent for, for, for how long it must have taken and I know how annoying it is to build a website. Like it's, it's not easy and you have no, probably- We do everything my, internally. In my, yeah, that's a billion dollars worth of data right there. Yep. Right? Yep. And it's free. <laughs> yeah, it's free. Hey, Jeremy, um, it's, it's, it's 38 minutes. I could make this go another 20 minutes, but you know what the last question is. Yeah, we have to ask it. So uh, Becky, what's your favorite restaurant in the Lehigh Valley? My favorite restaurant. Okay. We ask everyone on the show. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm not going to give you a political answer. I could. and But I'm going to tell you what, for real, my favorite restaurant is and why. Uh, Switchback Pizza in Emmaus. A number of reasons why. Um, first of all, yeah. it's completely yeah. nondescript. Little railroad building from back in the day um, that is owned by a husband and wife that actually were really into artisan food and they locally source everything they can. They make everything from scratch. Their food is fantastic. And before the pandemic, you could go, I mean, the place is like five tables inside, but they have a little patio to the yeah. side. And you can, you've been there, obviously, you know. And we go there with our friends all the time, it's, hang out, go over to Yergi's or Funk's and get a growler and hang out or bring wine or whatever the case. And just, you know, fantastic people. It's what I love about the Lehigh Valley is because you can invent yourself here. You can be what you want to be. And that's attainable for anyone. Um, and that's not an opportunity that you see in maybe some of our neighboring metros where you have to have millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of dollars to do anything. You can still have your American dream uh, here, regardless of where you start from. It's, it's a lot more attainable. And then you get these beautiful things that happen, these gathering places, um, whether it's parks, whether it's restaurants that um, make the Lehigh Valley our, our arts and culture and entertainment. I mean, Steel Stacks, hello. Yes. The Allentown Art Museum, my God, yes. the amount of stuff we have here, the Nurture Nature Center in Easton, it's just like endless. I could keep going yeah. of the opportunities The car here museum. That, um, I know. Yeah, it's Crayola just, Factory, oh. everything. Bacon Fest. Bacon Fest yes. gets how many people every year? It's insane. <laughs> it's like 60,000 people, and that's Easton. Yeah, I mean, I'm OG Bacon Fest when it was like just some balloons that said Bacon Fest, you know, and they ran up <laughs> bacon in the first hour. Um, and, you know, now it's just like nationally known. I mean, yep. what more can you say about the Lehigh Valley? We got bacon. But <laughs> <laughs> that aside, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Um, and, you know, I encourage your listeners to reach out. Uh, we're here to support our entire community and to be an accurate, timely and positive partner um, in the work that we all do. We, we don't do it without each other. So I, I appreciate you guys recognizing that and having me on to talk a little bit about it. Well, thanks so much for joining. And if the listeners want to get a hold of you, just go to the website, lvpc.org uh, yep. and go to the contact page route. Is that the best way? Yeah, it is. Um, and right. to the staff here, uh, you see a transportation planner, you have a transportation question. I mean, they're very cool people um, and they're very, very smart. And, you know, anybody here is willing to help you out. So um, okay, just reach out. Perfect. Thank you so much, Becky. This is um, Jeremy you. Water, uh, Tejas Kasai. This is Real Estate Investor MBA.com. We appreciate you uh, joining. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye.